Come on, guys, don't you want your delicious red box and unlocking that Queen Amidala on the very first round of this conquest? Then I'm here to help you guys. We're going to tackle Sector 3 feats, and boy, is it the cheesiest sector. Let's do this. Alrighty, Sector 3 is definitely the best sector as far as cheese, just because it's got the B1 Battle Droid node, and that one is just fantastic for all things cheesiness. Make sure you check out my video guide on how to get the BT1 kills, BT1 kills, the stab kills, as well as getting all of those B1 kills. It's this node that we're going to be using. Alrighty, cool. So let's check out the sector feats. In this sector, we need to gain four time, foresight 300 times, no problem, 50 enemy kills with droids absolutely no problem a thousand momentum which you can do even if you've got trashed here uh, Tuscans and attempt to inflict purge 300 times which we can do even if you don't have the likes of Grand Inquisitor and Reaver amazing amazing stuff now we're going to try and consolidate feats here so what I'm going to do is we're going to go over to the uh, the boss node sector here and we're going to get the droid kills we're going to get the foresight and we're going to get three stars on this particular node you do also need to win with boss nas now that's perfectly perfectly fine if um even even with a low gear boss nas we're going to do that one separately and obviously the win with no galactic legends we can totally totally do as well all right so Let's talk about data discs first. You want to be having lots and lots of damage on your support and healer type. So we're talking zealous ambitions. We're talking your leadership's resolve. You're talking stacking offense so that when you're gaining buffs, you're going to be raising your offense even further. And then I love quickening, baby. Get yourself some quickening data discs to increase your base speed and evasion and more zealous ambition. Two zealous ambition should be enough. Leader's resolve is fantastic, especially with the team that we're going to be using because it's massively going to inflate your stats and that's going to translate into additional droid kills thanks to zealous ambition if you don't have leaders resolve i'd highly recommend you get vitality it is a data disc that will increase the max health of your team as well and that will spread out to the whole team so let's talk about the team that we're going to be using there are a number of options that you can use for this but this one will get you the 60 kills and it will also get you uh, foresight as well as droid kills it's not this team don't worry about that team we're going droids of course droids so we are going to go in with a sorty lead here the great thing about sorty is that she is a support and a droid and she's got an amazing aoe that i don't even have the zeta on and it still works wonders if you got the zeta on it even better okay we are then going to throw in bb8 bb8 is going to give us additional tm at the start of the gate he also wiggles passes a boatload of buffs which is going to feed into our stacking offense raising our offense i like c3po because he appears well with bb8 additional calls to assist gets translation able to reduce the cooldown on your illuminated destiny far quicker then you can use the likes of t3m4 if you've got the zeta on him in particular increasing the um, defense penetration of the team is also a support type with aoe's he can be very good or you can use the likes of ig11 and we're also going to throw in the likes of R2-D2. You could think of using L3 as well. Very, very good tank, just not a support type. So I, in the video that I'm using, I'm using R2-D2 and I'm using IG-11. I think that both of these are relatively um, interchangeable. You can probably swap them out. Like I said, T3-M4, very good choice. L3, very good choice. Just this is a lot of support types to help up our damage. R2-D2 also gives us stealth, which gives us additional sources of foresight because otherwise the only source we've got really is bb8 okay so let's roll the footage so the thing that's really great about this node and in this team in particular you just basically put it on full, full auto and it plays itself we can throw out this aoe here from sorty the whole team dies apart from the boss who can't die in the meantime every single one of these kills is going to be droid kills for you you can easily easily get all 50 kills in just one battle super super easy check it out we're doing like 130k on a basic over here we've got more sources of foresight from ig11 sources of foresight from r2d2 sources of foresight when bb8 gets hit you know like lots and lots of foresight going through all that foresight is playing into the stacking offense so raising our offense even further we're also able to have quickening which raises our evasion which means we're going to survive a little bit longer ig11 is a healer he's going to keep your team alive and we're just going to let it play out Thanks to Zealous Ambition, a lot of our droids are doing stupid amounts of damage. Lots of them are able to pass the taunt around here between R2-D2, BB-8 and uh, IG-11. We've always got a source of taunting. We've got uh, our cooldown decreased by translation from C-3PO. It's only passing to some of our units, but it's still better than nothing because we can keep that additional foresight and the taunts and gain additional illuminated destiny. See there from BB-8. 
and it just plays itself, guys. So in order to get the three stars, you have to use the event special ability, guys. But you don't want to do it until you've got 60 droids killed. You see the crate here just in the middle? Currently on 21, 22 now. That is counting how many B... Well, how many droid stacks we've killed. Not necessarily B1s, because the commander droid doesn't count as a B1. But that counts... Um, each of the kills that we get throughout this entire battle. We need to wait until that gets up to 60 before we hit that button, okay? So let's fast forward so we're not just sat here watching us go through the entire thing. I don't think that's a good use of either of our time. So let's fast forward. Now, obviously, as the battle goes on, it does start to lag out a little bit. It does get a harder time of actually learning how to calculate all of the figures that are being added to the droid stacks and stuff like that. So you will experience a bit of slowdown, but it should be OK. The also, also, the enemy is going to be hitting harder and they're going to be tankier and stuff like that. But with this team, I was totally fine and I could probably drag this battle out even longer and farm those additional foresights if I needed. But once you've got to that 60 stack, See down here in the bottom right, we've got the event special ability. Get out of here. You just use that and that will finish the battle. Remember, you need at least 60 stacks to get three stars. 40 stacks gives you two stars and 20 stacks gives you one stars. And that's how you do it. We're getting three or four feats done in one go there. Fantastic. Let's take a look now at using the exact same node in order to get ourselves a bunch of momentum. Now, you can do this in a number of ways. You can either do it with Dad Bod Boba if you have him. He is able to generate lots of momentum in himself through this node, but you can also do it much quicker with a Tuscan team, even if your Tuscans are not particularly well geared. Okay, so you can take a look at mine now. I've got a couple that are in the relic levels, but as long as you've got just a little bit, even, even if you die as soon as you come in, you'll still generate at least 150 momentum right out the gate. Now, the longer you survive, the better off you're going to be, but we will show that this works very, very well. Again, if you've got Leader's Resolve in particular, it can really help your Tuscan Chieftain survive. So watch, just as soon as we come in now, boop -a -de -boop -a -de -boo, we take one turn and boom, everybody on my team has got 27, foresight, uh, 27 momentum there. You know, 27 times 5, that's already like 130 odd momentum, and we just build it up even more over time. It's fantastic. It's really good. Now, don't do what I'm doing here in attacking the Commando Battle Droid, but if you can keep using that first special from Warrior in particular, that's going to give your whole team an additional 10 momentum. Even with low gear Tuscans, guys, you should be able to get some really, really good business done with this. Just put it on auto and wait it out. At the very least, you should be getting about 130, but you're probably getting closer to about 300 plus you know it's it's a very decent way of getting this done now this isn't the best team to do it against in an ideal world you'll have an old republic team i'm talking a karth lead with candorus okay that team will that they will get you most likely a thousand momentum in one battle now i don't have one in sector three but i do have one in sector four so if you didn't have to find a Karth lead Old Republic, don't worry about it. You know, you can use this node to great effect. It will get you a couple of hundred stacks, no problem. Just means you need to do it about five times. It's a bit of a waste, but it's almost guaranteed victories. You can also do it against like Mon Mothma nodes or against Geo nodes or against Imperial Troopers. But I find they're a little bit more... Um, offensive and you might be running the risk of just dying a little bit too quickly so you can do this for pretty good momentum and drag it out but i'm going to show you now an actual node against a carth lead a candrus auto one just to give you an example of how much momentum you can actually generate so this team is the one that you're looking for. Like I said, I didn't get one in Sector 3, but if you can get one in Sector 3, this is the perfect team for Momentum, even if you've got relatively low gear Tuscans. So I'm just going to show you how it works, because it is you basically don't have to do anything, guys. You really don't, because Candorus essentially is attacking, gaining so much team turn meter all the time and healing that you just generate infinite amounts of momentum almost immediately okay so we're going to go first just because of all of our quickening data discs uh, and then we're just gonna we're just gonna go in just gonna go in hit people as soon as they start taking turns and candra starts gaining a bunch of momentum it's basically over we've got you know five across the board right now that's all very well and good da, 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 da. and wait for them to take a turn now just watch what happens we had 20 26 yep okay candra you're supposed to take a turn come on buddy come on buddy i believe in you all right, here we go. There is our momentum rolling. Boop de boop de boo. I know it looks like 40 just now, but Candorus has actually stopped attacking. Let's actually just put this on auto from here. Boom. Look at all that momentum generating straight away. We've got 65 across, 70s, 71, 72. 
Candrus is going to be like, yep, I'm gaining a bunch of turn meter. It crashes the game. Look at that, 178, 106. This is the best way of generating momentum. If you just so happen to have an old Republic node, it is literally the best. Look at that, jumped up to 230 momentum there from Candorus. One hit, he was just like, Brap, and we're just like, I'll gain about 100 momentum if that's okay with you. So this will get a thousand momentum done in just one battle. So I wanted to show you this, even though I don't have a Carthonasi node in Sector 3, they can show up. Just try and keep an eye out for them. It's the best way of getting momentum done in one battle, even with relatively bad Tuscans. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope that helps you guys. Hope that helps you. Smashing. We're going to look at Foresight and Purge now together. This time, I'm going to make sure that we don't have anything that's going to be increasing our damage output. Okay, we don't actually want a boatload of damage output, so get rid of anything that's got stacking offense and your zealous ambitions and all that sort of stuff. Quickening, absolutely fine. Quickening is totally fine. And if you've got, um, is it Spirited Speed, I think it is? Let's just take a look now. Spirited Speed, yeah. Gaining buffs gives us turn meter. That's also a really, really useful one to have. Um, Entrenched is absolutely fine. There's the extra Spirited Speed. So having something like this, you know, lots of quickening. Leader's Resolve is still okay. Heal over times is great. Entrenched is great. Spirited Speed is great because we're going to be generating turn meter. What we want to be doing is going in against this boss node for a number of reasons. Um, and we need to make sure that even if you've got, you know, bad Inquisitors, this can work. We're going in with a Palpatine lead, okay? Because he's going to be generating us... Oh, that's Imperial Troopers. Uh, he's going to be generating us a lot of turn meter. So we want Palpatine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in two Jedi which is going to be Hermit Yoda and Grandmaster Yoda. They're just going to pair off there for Foresight more than anything else. And then we're going to throw in some Inquisitorious, okay? So we want to have um, Seventh Sister. The reason we're having Seventh Sister is because she can both add and remove um, stacks of, of uh, Purge, and then we're going to be using Eighth Brother, okay? These two are just going to be generating a lot of turn meter for us. And let's go in and see how it gets done. So the great thing about this node, apart from the fact that, you know, it's basically an infinite respawning node, is that if you don't kill off the adds, then you can just focus on the commando battle droid and you'll be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to spread some uh, some mastery right now. I'm going to throw out an AOE. Look at all those purges. Those purges are starting to roll. Isn't that nice? And we'll just basic here. More purges, more purges, more purges. And we will go ahead and zappity doo -dah. Lovely. And then Palpatine is going to go Cackling Doom. That's going to give us some additional Foresight. We're going to hop, not Foresight, TM. Going to hop and we're going to spread. And that's going to give us Foresight to the team. Now, when we get up to like five stacks, we can use the Saw Blade. And that's going to get rid of those stacks of Purge. If you just stay stuck on the Commando Battle Droid and just go full auto, we should be able to be generate generating a lot of turn meter through Palpatine's leadership. We should be able to control the enemy team, bring up the stacks of Purge, and we'll also be able to bring them down because you can't actually increase the stacks of Purge if they're at six. Once they're at six, it's capped out, as it were. So we need to be able to do stuff like that second special over there to remove the stacks from the commando, um, uh, commando droid and then build them back up using their specials and their basics and stuff like that. In an ideal world, we wouldn't be doing AoEs and hurting the enemy team, but hey, you can't have it completely perfect, can you? I find this is a really good way of getting the Purge feats done. Because you're not giving them time to build up stacks. We're still there gaining a bunch of foresight thanks to GMY, thanks to Seventh Sister, her second special, which also removes stacks of Purge, by the way, also passes us foresight to the team, which is nice. So all very well and good. And we're not killing them off, so they're not gaining additional stats. So you should be able to do this with relatively low gear units. Now, you could throw in, instead of Hermit Yoda, you could throw in a tank there to try and take the brunt if your um, Inquisitorious are really low gear. So you could have something like um, Kenobi or Ben, or you could even have JML and use Voluntary Vanguard. All these sort of things can work. But I find this is a really good way of just slowly over time getting those purge feats done, even if your Inquisitorious are not great. It's not a perfect turn meter loop, unfortunately. You can use stuff like Fifth Brother, but I do find that Fifth Brother generates a little too much turn meter for himself, and you can't get rid of the purge off the enemy team, and that just ends up wasting a lot of it. So he'll generate more turn meter, but unfortunately you won't be able to strip away the stacks of purge like that. So we have killed our first stack there. All you want to do is just make sure you then hard target the commando battle droid because he can't die until his enemies die, his allies die, sorry. 
Um, and that's the most important thing. We don't want we don't want to be killing off people too quickly because they're going to be ramping their stats, and we don't want any of that business. We want to be able to survive and have a good time. There we go, purge, and that's kind of the long and short of it. Now, if you've got Grand Inquisitor and if you've got Reaver and stuff like this, it's a lot easier. You just go in with Reaver lead and Grand Inquisitor as you're going through the sector, and you'll be able to get boatloads of purge as you progress. If not, I find something like this is a relatively reliable way of building up your stacks of purge with minimal effort from your part, thought, and RNG, basically. So there it goes, throwing out. Unfortunately, because their stats are ramping, it's harder to land those purges, but we'll still be able to farm them at least on the Commando Droid, okay? The mid-sector boss, then. We need to win with Boba Fett, Scion of Django, and without using any Jedi, Sith, or unaligned Force users. If you have got Jabba the Hutt, I would use Jabba the Hutt and throw in Boba Fett, Scion of Django. If you don't, perfectly easy to do with a standard Bounty Hunter team. For this, I'm going to be going in with a boss lead. Obviously, you need Boba Fett, Sign of Django, Grief Karga, as well as OG Mando, and then the fifth is a flexible one. Whoever you want to use. I'm using Fennec because she's the best one to be using here, but if you want to use Cad Bane, if you want to use anybody that's a support type, feel free to do that. We're just going to focus in on Palpatine, we're going to trigger Contract and immediately delete Starkiller, and that's most of the problems finished with this team, you're kind of already done. I'd focus on Visus Mars so she can't revive anybody else you kill. You can't revive somebody that you kill with a Disintegrate from OG Mando, so you don't have to worry about that. But once you got rid of these guys, Mara Jade can be a little bit annoying. It seems to me like she was very deliberately targeting my grief with stuns, which is was really frustrating because it was stopping me from being able to cleanse all the all the um the shock and the and the stuns and the dazes and all that sort of nonsense that she was putting out. It was a little bit frustrating, but hey ho, what can you do about it? Just have to sort of look see she goes straight after grief. I was like, dang nabbit Mara, and then she hid and stuff like that. It's still like totally fine. It's like she can't defeat our team. But it was frustrating. So I decided I'm just going to get rid of Ben. So even if she stealths, I'll be able to target her. She goes ahead and stuns Grief again. I'm like, come on, you got four other targets, Mara Jade. Stop picking on Grief Karga. My poor man Carl Weathers over there just weathering the storm of Mara Jade. Those red-headed vixens, you know what I mean? All right, so once we've got rid of Starkiller, it's kind of an easy game, to be honest. Um... If you're still having trouble with the survivability, maybe just go in with a um, a Dash Rendar team here. Dash lead with uh, with Boba Fett sign of Django will absolutely crush face. So just to give an example of that, Zealous Ambition with Leaders Resolve and Dash Rendar. You could throw in some Scoundrels, Boba Fett sign of Django. This is like, if you need to have anything survive, you just just do something like this with Zealous Ambition, guys. It's just ridiculous. You clear the, f the field before the enemy gets to do anything. So, yeah. If you don't have Zealous Ambition, go ahead and use something like um, uh, Vitality, for example. So, we start up. I'm using Hand just to do something more than anything else. We go on one time speed and we hit the AoE and we sit back and we laugh maniacally. <laughs> and you win. And done. Um, that's how, you, that, that, that's how you do it, okay? Now, we can take the same approach to the B1 node. We're just going to go in with Dash Rendar. I'm probably going to take out Han Solo and Chewie. You don't need Commander Ahsoka Tano. She's just passing additional stats. We'll go ahead and get in Scoundrels, and I'll probably go in with IG and Queel, just to give us that additional level of survivability and some more support. Uh, you don't use Boba Fett, obviously. You use Boss Nass. Now, mine is Relic 5, but you can do this with lower gear, uh, lower Relic Gungans. Just um, make sure you've got the damage output. We need to get to 20 kills minimum on the droids in order to make this work. So if you've got Voluntary Vanguard and stuff like that to force a taunt on someone, all the better. We're just going to AoE here. Oh, let's go back up to full time speed. Lovely. And uh, yeah, let's just basic here. I'm not going to use the I have spoken just yet. And I pass the turn back over here to my boy Dash because we like Dash. Boom. And then boom. Just going to basic all the way around here. AoEs from IG11. Uh, I don't even know what Boss Nass does. Yeah, I've got him at R5. That doesn't mean I know what he, I know what he does. I mean, come on. Let's uh, use I have spoken here. We'll get rid of you. Get rid of you. Probably should have used the foresight ability there. Truth be told. Truth be told. Can we stun him? Blah. Yes, we can. I got. You got. We got to kill all the droids. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> cool. So IG-11 is going to be doing all of our taunting business. Let's just make sure that we've got at least a little bit of foresight. Leave him alone. Leave alone my Boss Nass. And then we'll basic. 
and Creel is a support, so he does get to do stupid amounts of damage. We'll do a nice big AoE. Brap. Lovely. And absolutely do this AoE to gain that taunt. Pass the turn right back over to our good boy Dash, who's going to basic summon and destroy them. Basic summon and destroy them. And then here comes the destroy out of Creel. Oh, okay. No, Creel's not doing enough damage. The counterattacks from... Oh, we've got an insta-kill, though. Let's go ahead and insta-kill over here. Beautiful. The counterattack doing absolute business there. Let's get the stun. Lovely. We've got to the 20 stacks, and you just use the event special ability. That's all you have to do. Don't bother trying to go any further. If you're comfortable, if you've got high gear Gungans, crack on. Just keep going. Keep pushing through and get more kills. But all you need to do is get to that first 20 stacks and use the get out of here. Boss Nass will survive and you will trigger that feat. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has to be worth a like and subscribe. If you could be so kind to do that for me right now, I will be eternally grateful. Take to the comment section and let me know the teams that you used so I can expand my big brain knowledge even further with your beautiful, beautiful ideas. Massive shout out to my wonderful patrons. Thank you all for your continued support. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen, and may the force be with you.